Okay, we are now moving on to 2.3. Now, 2.3 is one of these like exchange rate questions, right? And sometimes these can get a little bit tricky, um, but this one is actually quite a good one to practice. So let's just jump in and do what we need to do. Okay, so it says John's daughter, Megan, right, works in Denmark. She earns an annual gross salary of 600,000 krona, right? So this is Krona is the unit for Danish, for the Danish currency, okay? She informed her father that she had the following annual deductions from her salary, right? So a certain amount for investments, the labor market contribution, and employment deduction, okay? So those are taken off her salary. Okay, now let's look at what we can do. So 2.3.1 says... Calculate in rands Megan's annual gross salary using the following exchange rates. Okay, so they've given us the Danish krona to the euro and then the euro to the rand. So, because they've given me us, right, her salary, right, they've given us her salary in krona, we're going to have to go from krona to euro and then from euro to South African rand. So, it's sort of like a via the via to get where we need to be because... We have to calculate the amount in rands. That's what they've told us we need to do. So we're going to have to do a little bit of what we call manipulation. Okay. Manipulation is only ever good in maths, not in life. Okay. So let us look at her salary. So her salary is 600,000 krona. Okay. And 7.47 krona. I think you write it like that. Equals 1 euro. Okay, so let's figure out, right, how many euros she earns. So if we know that 7.47 equals 1 euro, we have to say the 600,000 krona divided by 6.47 to get it into euro. So we would expect that the amount of euros that she earns, right, would be fewer than the amount of krona because... The number of krona needed to make up one euro is larger than the number of euros needed to make up one krona. Okay, so we're going to say the number of krona divided by the number of krona needed to get one euro. So we say 600,000 divided by, what was it? 7.47. Okay, so this is how many euro she earns, right? So don't round anything off at this stage because remember, this is not our final answer. This is the amount in euro. So we can say euro, you can use the euro sign if you want to, but not everyone knows what that is. So let's just say euro, okay? So this is the amount of euro she earns, but we want to find out how many South African rands, right, she earns. So if one euro, we know here, let's just write it down, right? We know that one euro equals 15.64 rands, okay? Let me just make sure you can see all of that, okay? So we know that that is how many euros she earns, and we know that one euro equals 15.64. So we're going to have to take the number of euros that she earns and times it by 15.64, now, you might be saying, but Margie, like, how come you divide the one that side and you times it this side? So what's important is in this instance, the euro is the, is, um, we're going from krona to euro. So we're going from a weaker currency to a stronger currency, right? This is weaker because it takes more of it to get one euro. In this instance, the euro is still the stronger currency, but we're going from the stronger currency to the weaker currency, right? So when we go from weak to strong, we divide, right? So if we go from weak to strong, we divide. But when we go from strong to weak, we multiply. That's really important, okay? So now we take the amount that we, earn, that we um, know she earns in euros and we times it by 15.64 to get the amount that she earns in rands. So in rands, she earns one, two, Five six two two four point nine zero. Remember, always two decimal places when it comes to currency. So that is how much she earns in rands.
Okay, so this was sort of like a via the via question because you have to go from krona to euro and then euro to rand. But as long as you understand the workings of a currency, you should be fine. Okay, four bags, four marks in the bag, not four bags in the mark. Okay, <laughs> we have now done that part of the question. So I'm just going to put that over there. Not sure if we need it, but let's check. Okay, so it says here, John stated that Megan's total annual deductions, so all these guys, right, are more than 52% of her annual gross salary. So it says verify, showing all calculations whether this statement is true. So we basically have to sum all of these guys, right, add all of those together because those are all her deductions, and work out what percentage of her total earnings they account for, okay, and whether that is greater than 52%. That's what we have to do. So let's first write, right? We write our question number. And then we're going to say, we're going to say here, basically, we're going to say deductions, right? Over salary. So the deductions are 229760. That's for the investment policy. Plus 48000 plus three, seven, two, zero, zero, okay? And her total salary is the 600 amount. Okay, so basically we just need to plug all of those guys into our calculator and we get an answer. Okay, uh, four, eight, zero, 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 plus three, seven, two, zero, zero. Okay. So it gives us 0 0.524933. Okay, but we want to make this a percentage. So to make it a percentage, we have to times it by 800, right? Whenever we want to make a percentage, we have to times it by 100. So the percentage is 52.4. 9%. So I've rounded it off to two decimal places. The reason it's 9 is because 3 is less than 4. If a number is less than 4, we round down. Okay, so that is the percentage. And then we haven't finished the question, right? The question says, he is he right in saying that it is over 52%? It's 52.49, so it's only just over 52. But yes, he is correct. Okay, does that make sense? I don't know why I keep asking that, you can't reply, but I hope it makes sense. Okay, cool. So that is 2.3.2 done. We only have 2.4 and then we're on to question three.